Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Hourlings Podcast Project. My name is Martin Wilsey and I'm your host. Tonight, our topic is going to be fan fiction. And for this topic, we're going to be led by Shay. So Shay, take it away. So yeah, so this is kind of like, I want to say it's a little bit of a controversial topic actually, which we dive into. Um, because fan fiction, so just for those who don't know what fan fiction is, it is um, authors or amateur writers who are writing and oftentimes publishing on blogs or on fanfiction.net or other fan fiction sites stories which use characters and settings um, from another author's work. So, for example, you could be writing a short story that's set in the world of The Lord of the Rings or the world of Harry Potter, but uses maybe some characters that you made up or changes the events of the plot um, and reimagines things uh, in different ways, which can be very entertaining and, uh, and very popular to those who are fans and just cannot get enough of that series. Um, so for instance, if you are a huge Harry Potter fan and you gobbled up all seven books and every all the movies and plays, et cetera, and you still just can't get enough, you'll be reading some fan fiction because you just want it to, you just want it to go on. You don't want it to end. So it's an interesting controversial topic though, because I, I've been a reader of fan fiction for a long time. I don't do it much anymore, but when I was just starting out as a writer around the age of 14, 15, um, I read a lot of fan fiction and I came across a lot of really good writers, like writers who really knew their stuff. They knew how to craft sentences, they knew how to craft characters and story, but they were using um, other people as intellectual property. And so the controversy is you have these really great writers and you wonder, you know, is fan fiction limiting them? Is it actually inhibiting them from becoming um, their own storytellers and writing their own stuff and publishing uh, as an as a independent author? Um, or is it just something where, you know, people, if you just enjoy doing it, just do it for the sake of doing it. Don't worry about getting published or getting having a career um, you know, so that's kind of the, the controversy. I likened it to, in our last discussion, I likened it to someone who loves to sing songs but doesn't like to write their own songs. So it's always singing, that, always, always singing, but singing what other people wrote and not wanting to craft their own music and become a musician with a label and, a, and an album. Um, but maybe you disagree with that that metaphor, or, or maybe you have some thoughts on well, this kind Shay, of controversy. But I'm jump in. I'm girl lies in love with her. Uh -huh. I, I did. Here we go. We're all please, please. <laughs> those, those I did write my own songs. <laughs> we we want to keep both our viewers. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. So I know. no, I, I I want to add another layer to um, to Shay's uh, opening statements. I think that fan fiction is largely um, uh, done by people that are not interested in making money actually writing. Right. Uh, I, well, uh, I, you know, I, I thought back in the day that, you know, I would, I came up with an idea for a Harry Potter fan fiction. I never got to it because, well, you can't sell it. And um, I uh, just didn't have the time. And, uh, I was busy writing my own stuff. Right. Um, but a lot of people do it, and they do it just for fun. Yeah. And, um, well, for the adulations. Uh, adulations, I mean, that's it. A lot of fan fiction writers, including some of my friends, they get so much happiness from just being recognized as a writer. Which, well, there is a big fan fiction community out there. Yeah. That, is, uh, that is absolutely true. But... Yeah. And if that's what you enjoy. Yeah, if that's what you like. And if you like the community and you like, you know, um, that aspect, that's a good reason to do it. But as a total mercenary author, um, yeah. I, fan fiction is not, not the thing for me. Well, I, I, will, I will take kind of a halfway point. I, I think if it's something you just want to do for fun and to share with other people in the community, that's fine. That's what mm -hmm. you enjoy. That's what they enjoy. There's mm -hmm. absolutely nothing wrong with it. Now, if you want to be an author, I think maybe perhaps starting with fan fiction is a good way to write kind of with the training wheels on. Right. Because you don't have to do the world building to write in the Harry Potter world. 
you even come with a whole bunch of characters that are already pre-created uh, for you. You just have to work on, say, plotting and dialogue and, and certain other things, but a lot of it's been done for you. Um, right. But then you don't get the later. experience doing the world building. And mm -hmm. you, you've got to, you know, uh, get, your, get your muscles exercised in that capacity at some point instead of letting... Um, well, I mean, it is one muscle that you're letting to get weak, but you're building other muscles. You're building the muscles to say, how do I craft a good... How do I do the AB pat, a pattern of dialogue? And how do I set a scene that has a beginning and end that makes me want to read further. Those kind of things you are getting better. Yeah, another thing that needs to be mentioned is that um, some authors are cool with fan fiction. Other authors will send lawyers after you. Yes. Uh, depending on uh, the author, um, some intellectual property um, is very closely held by certain uh, um, yeah. Owners. If you go against so, the mouse, keep that in mind. If, the, if you're going against the mouse, the mouse is coming after you. Uh, uh, well, Lord, of the, Lord of the Rings, I will tell you, is um, a little bit more sanguine in terms of as long as you're not making money, they're happy. Um, Harry Potter, same thing. But uh, some, like Doctor Who, and my first fan fiction was, and my first writing, in fact, was fan fiction for Doctor Who. Doctor Who, there was actually sanctioned places that you could actually submit your work and get paid for it. So it really depends on the fan fiction. And of course, no, uh, we'd be remiss now, if we didn't mention Sherlock Holmes. The, the, partners, world. the partner site of, um, I, I call it a partner site. I'm not sure if they actually are partnered, but um, of fanfiction.net, if you have been using the training wheels, as David is saying, and kind of getting your bearings, and you say, okay, now I want to try to publish a chapter of my own story, but very casually, maybe with, maybe with the same followers that I've gotten for my fan fiction. You could go to Fiction Press, which mm -hmm. is a very similar format and everything to, uh, I, you know, the aesthetics are so similar that that's why I think they might be the same web, web designer. Um, but yeah, I agree that it's a great, great, great place to practice your, your skills and to see if this is something that you enjoy doing. Um, I followed one story that was a uh, fan fiction. Again, this is back when I was 15 or so. And the author would release a chapter like every two weeks or so. And people would just, even with that large of a gap, every two weeks between chapters, people were just so into it that she had like a big following of people that were waiting for the next chapter and saying, you know, when's it coming out? And you're such a good writer and all that. And I remember that author posted an update one time. I, I went to check for a chapter and said, you know what? I've decided to take this all off and change the characters and change some of the things and try to make it my own story. Because she had just borrowed two of the two of the characters from a, a book a book and really made up the rest of the story she was like this close to having her own story except she was using different characters so she said you know no more of that i think i'm i think i got something here i think i got a, a winner that i got such a following so that's also an interesting way to uh test your your following you know well, i think there's a there's a few people who have done that successfully right um 50 shades man it was a Twilight fan. Oh, that's a good, that's a good case study. with the uh, portal instruments was actually was actually Draco Malfoy fan fiction. Mm -hmm. got what was? Uh, the mortal instruments from Cassandra oh. Clare. Okay. Uh -huh. was Draco Malfoy uh, Harry Potter uh, fan fiction. Um, uh, if you saw After on Netflix, After and its sequels were Anna Todd. Uh, that was One Direction um, fan fiction. Um, and Fifty Shades of Grey was uh, obviously Twilight like yeah. and fiction. Mm -hmm. um, so there's authors who have done it successfully where they have taken their works and um, filed the, uh, the, the serial numbers off, changed enough things mm -hmm. to publish them separately. But I think there's also a danger to fan fiction in that with the training wheels, you're exercising some muscles, but not uh, other muscles. Um, and so I, I think, uh, first of all, I think a lot of people get hooked on the adulation, even if they want to be a, a, a successful paid writer. And it's hard to wean yourself off of that uh, and put something out um, into the marketplace for money that might or might not be as, as successful. And you still have to gain some other skills, uh, like creating your own universe and, and things of that nature. So I think it can be a launching pad, fan fiction, but I, I, I still think there's other skills you have to gain
Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I'm sorry, Shane. Go ahead. Go ahead, Joker. Well, I was going to say that, uh, you know, you could focus those skills on your world and still give it away for free as a, as a kudos and let it build your platform. And once you take out all of the other people's works in your work and make it your own work, you can use that to market yourself. You can't always do that with fan fiction. Sometimes fan fiction, even fan fiction, you cannot take that fan fiction and say, hey guys, you like that? Look at this stuff that I've written. Sometimes you can't do that, but you can definitely do that if you've got your own work. For sure. One, one hazard that I would, I would precaution people if you're not used to reading fan fiction, you're just not hearing about it, or you just kind of want to investigate your favorite fandom and see what kind of fan fiction exists for it. Uh, fan fiction gets sexualized a lot. Yes. So there is a, that's probably the most popular type of fan fiction. It's what they call slash fiction, which is like yes. a combo of two characters. Oh, yeah. So instead of, uh, instead of Harry falling in love with Ginny Weasley, they'll do, you know, a slash fiction with Harry and, oh my God, I don't know, like no. McGonagall I'll, or so, something I'll, crazy. You know? I'll, I'll give you an example. <laughs> My, my first convention, the science fiction convention I ever went to was Shore Leave, mm -hmm. which uh, has evolved into a more of a media um, convention right. now, but started out as primarily Star Trek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this would have been like 1987 or 88 or something like that. And um, they had lots of fan fiction, um, little pamphlets that were on sale. And I was rather surprised to discover slash fiction. And not only that, but slash fiction that featured Kirk and Spock. Yes, that is very popular for some reason. I, yes. I don't know right. young ladies that do enjoy that stuff. And, and I'm, I'm not saying anything against it. It's just, it was eye-opening for me. And one of the first pieces I read was uh, Sauron and Melkor from The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> being, is Sauron being, well, sodomized by Melkor. I mean... Uh, well, uh, here, here's the interesting thing you got to be careful about, too. Um, you know... If you get the eye of Sauron on you, mm -hmm. um, and the intellectual property owner uh, sees what you wrote and does not like it, yes, you, they will go after you. They will. I mean, I, I can remember reading about um, Apple. If if you depict one of their phones in in one of their movies as being used by a villain, they won't let you. They won't give right. you permission to do that. Right. It's uh it's interesting. So next time you watch a murder mystery, make sure you notice what phones they're using. Right. <laughs> Cuz the villain always uses what kind? Androids. Yeah. <laughs> that being said, it is a great way to practice your romance writing. You know, it's that's I don't know if it's a great way. Well, I mean, it's a way. <laughs> I mean, it's you know, everybody has their own kind of fun. You know, yeah. it's, uh, you know, well, we, we, you can write fan can... fiction, play fantasy football, whatever's your thing. Right. right. Romance is its own thing. We will, at some point, we will go into the ins and outs of writing romance, but not, that's not this episode. This episode is about fan fiction. Well, I really like, I really want to talk a little more about that idea that Marty kind of alluded to. Like, I feel like so often writers write with, like, the goal of being widely read the goal of making income. Yeah. When, as with any art, sh shouldn't we most value writing just for ourselves? Isn't that something that fan fiction does? Well, fan fiction I, I write the things that I want to read myself. Right. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully there's an audience for, for other people like me that want to read the things that I write. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, and I, the way I look at it is, I do want to write something that I will enjoy reading. I want to write something that others will enjoy reading. And then I'm going to put it out there. And if I get one person to buy the book, I'll be happy. If I get 10 people to buy the book, I'll be happy. I'll just be happy if anyone buys the book. I'm not going to set goals on what I sell. I'm just going to say I did it and I'm proud of it. Well, I, I will say well, there's one advantage I think that fan fiction has. Like it, it's tough to get started writing and being serious yeah. about writing. Yeah. And if... If the desire to really write another Star Trek story or another uh, Harry Potter chapter or something 
is what uh, gets your butt into a chair and your, your hands on the keyboard and makes you write a story and, and start working on those skills. If, that, it's, if that's what gets you going at writing, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you choose at some point to, to actually turn it into a job where you make money, hey, fan fiction was a good place to start. And there's a bunch of writers who have started there. Yeah. Well, and actually, David, that's that's a good counterpoint to what I just said, which is, yes, you can put it out, out there as a non-fan fiction, but now you've got to market to the entire world. And how do you become the signal and the noise? But if you're going to a Harry Potter or Doctor Who or Lord of the Rings or even Twilight, uh, you've got a ready-made fan base. You've limited your audience but more fanatical and so you are more likely to get noticed and i guess on the reverse end if we are if we're expressing our opinions on the writers of fan fiction i would also like to throw it out there that if you are an author and someone writes fan fiction about your work or if you're fortunate enough to have your work be that widely known and that widely loved please don't be an a-hole about it i know yeah. we're talking about we were just saying you know that people can get on your case for intellectual property um, please remember when you were little and you were a young writer and it was hard for you to come up with your own material and be flattered that someone absolutely loves what you've created so much that they make fan fiction. I remember when I was uh, first published and having all these big dreams of, you know, getting a really famous, which I haven't, uh, but, you know, I thought, oh, yeah, hey, getting a publishing deal, I'm going to be a, a star. Wait, I thought you were, were famous. Be, I, I was going really, to find your coattails. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to ride all three of you guys' coattails. Ride my coattails, yeah, give me another year or so, I'll work on that. But I was <laughs> thinking, man, you know, I'll know that I really made it to, to stardom when I have fan fiction written about my work. So I actually, yeah. for me, it's almost like uh, on my bucket list. I I'm, want I'm to with do you on that one. I would um, love for someone to take uh, Rebecca yeah. Priestley and, and put her in a uh, interesting, even if they did exactly. her, I don't care. I don't mind the idea of somebody doing fan fiction about my stuff. But if you sell it, I will come after you. Agreed. Right. You yeah, give it away for free. Yeah, I'm cool. I didn't. Right. I should have said I didn't mean to monetize it, but I meant when you're publishing on fanfiction.net, where you're just, you know, not making anything and you're just getting uh, some fun out of it and getting some people to read it and appreciate it. That's a but, different story. But don't send me your fan fiction. I can't read it. Uh, I can't afford the um, the, the possibility of somebody. Uh, suing me for saying right. that I stole their fan fiction. That, that is Detroit. true. You have, That's true. You yeah. have to be very careful. My, J, J. My, Michael Straczynski was always actually, on that. I actually asked that, that. That's a good point you brought up there, David, because uh, I'm friends with John Flanagan of The Reign of the Apprentice I've mentioned here before. And I've asked him, he actually has a bunch of fan fiction written about his series. And I asked him if he ever reads it. And he actually said what you just said, David, that he, he stays far away from it because he's worried that he will subconsciously, not even really knowing that he's doing it, incorporate it into like his next book and then get into some trouble um, that, that, that was what uh j michael suchinski jms on usenet used to say all the time no story ideas whatever you do no story ideas i cannot see the story ideas because yeah. of course he knew he well, i don't care cool. about ideas but if, if an idea if an idea comes up in conversation tough ideas are not oh, yeah ideas are yeah, but they're down if down somebody down. Actually does you know a story featuring one of my characters and I read it and I do something similar in one of my stories, even if it's different, mm -hmm. you know, that's a lawsuit happening. A lawsuit you'll probably win, but it's a lawsuit you got to deal with. Yeah. And, and I'd rather not be suing my, uh, my fan base. Should I be lucky enough to collect a large one? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's really the case. Anything right. that, you know, will start involving lawyers. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to close by saying, that if you are a fan fiction writer, we support you. Yep. And uh, we hope that if you want, if it is part of your dream, that you will one day release the training wheels and go off on your own and make your own awesome writing. Um, but if that's not what you want to do, you just want to keep doing your thing, keep doing your thing, and uh, keep making beautiful prose and filling the, wor filling the wor world with words. Uh, which is what we do as writers. So that's and if it's that's Supergirl my fan fiction, send it my way. That's my closing thought. Do you guys have any closing thoughts? Make fun stuff. Yeah. Fun stuff. 
it's, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Fun stuff. Uh, you know, yeah, write enjoy. what you love to read yourself. Mm -hmm. If that, if you don't care about making money, um, fan fiction may be uh, good for you. Or it could be a good um, way to start and, and to uh, rest your, uh, your career later on. Right. A very good on -ramp. But to, if you uh, want to be, if you want to be a career author, have the courage to, to let go of it and to start yeah. your own thing. So I think it's just a matter of, I think we're just being very, we need to be very autonomous, but we want you to have the courage to grab it if that's what you want. Build that one extra yeah. muscle. Yep. Definitely. <laughs> All right, that's all I got. All right. All right. Thank you. Another final episode. Special. We'll see you guys next week.